Hey guys, I wanted to make this video today to show you how social media is probably ruining your life and is almost definitely ruining the lives of some people that you know. And I also wanted to show you why social media is making some people act like such huge jerks. I want to talk about this because lately, especially, I've been noticing that a lot of people are acting really nasty on social media. And I don't even go on social media very much, but what little I do see, I see a lot of nastiness. And I think the current climate has a lot to do with this. There's a lot of fear, there's a lot of panic, and there's a lot of negative emotions because people are stuck inside. People are unable to do the sort of activities that brings normal, healthy, mental well-being to people. But even under normal circumstances, people tend to act like giant jerks on social media. And so I decided to figure out why that was. And I thought about this a little bit, and it reminded me of a video that I watched by Alex Becker recently, which is an awesome video. If I can find it, I'll put the link in the description, but he has a lot of videos. I don't know if I'll be able to find it again. So anyway, some of this is going to be just blatantly robbed from him, so credit where it's due. But what he was talking about was... Uh, a series of experiments by psychologists where they were able to hook up a rat. They were able to hook up uh, electrodes to the brain of a rat such that they could control the, the pleasure centers in the rat's brain. That is, they could uh, push a button and give the rat a release of dopamine, which is the chemical that creates pleasure in the brain. And then in one of the experiments, they gave the rat itself access to the button. So the rat's brain was hooked up to these electrodes and it could push the button that would give it the dopamine hit. And so what they found was that if the rat had unrestricted access to this button, it would keep pushing the button over and over and over again, giving itself pleasure to such an extent that it forgot about its basic bodily needs and it would starve to death because it forgot to eat. So basically, because these rats had easy access to what uh, Alex Becker so poetically called the ratgasm button, they would just sit there pushing the button, giving themselves ratgasms until death. Okay, so what does that have to do with human beings? What does that have to do with social media? Well, social media is basically a ratgasm button for human beings. And all of us have a lower order brain. We all have a rat brain, so to speak. Normally called a lizard brain, but for the sake of this experiment, we'll call it a rat brain. We have those same pleasure centers in our brain. And in the olden days, uh, that would actually help us because in a normal natural environment, being able to, to release those pleasure hormones, to release that dopamine, was the result of a job well done in one way or another. So maybe we found some food, maybe we had sex, something that was good for our survival and reproduction. However, with the ratgasm button and that electronic contraption that made it work, it kind of short-circuited that, and instead of being a reward for doing something productive, it became a reward for doing really nothing at all. And social media has done almost exactly the same thing to human beings. And so I'm gonna show you how that works. It's a very simple process. Basically, we make a post or we make a comment on, on social media, and then we get people like the comment. So we get validation. And so that feels good. Every time we get validation, every time somebody likes our, our post or somebody, somebody comments approvingly on our post, uh, then we get a little dopamine hit. We get a little bit of validation. And so what do we do after that? Well, we go back and post again. So we get more dopamine hits. We get more ratgasm. So this posting uh, on the internet is our ratgasm button. Why? Because it takes zero effort, basically. So it's zero effort posting on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever and validation and validation is dopamine. So we are literally addicting ourselves to dopamine and ha suffering exactly the same problem as the rat because we get so addicted we ignore everything else in our life. So if you've ever found yourself spending hours on social media completely addicted to it, which by the way, I am guilty of, right? I'm saying all of this from experience because I know what it's like. You spend hours on social media 
and it makes your life worse. It just wastes your time and makes you forget about the things that are actually important, just like the rat forgot about the food. So basically you get stuck in this cycle until you die. It's an addiction. And like, just like uh, addiction to alcohol, just like 20% of people who are alcoholics buy 80% of the alcohol, uh, in the same way, 20% of the people on social media are making 80% of the posts because they're the ones who are the addicts. So most of the content that you see on social media is posted by people who are hopelessly addicted to this post validation cycle. And everybody who's posting on social media is doing it in one way or another because they want to feel important. Either they want to feel loved, or they want to feel popular, or they want to feel clever, or they want to feel funny, or they want to feel righteous, and like they are morally superior to the people around them. Now, from what I've seen, the deepest level of this addiction are the people who are the virtue signalers. The people who go around trolling through Facebook, uh, harassing people for their lack of virtue in order to highlight their own virtue, or maybe even blatantly talking about their own virtue. And if you've noticed these kind of people, which uh, I can't imagine you've been able to avoid them, probably you've noticed that the virtue signaling behavior involves feeling the most self-righteous with the least amount of actual virtue. So basically you can summarize it like that. You have virtue signaling points, that is the amount of validation that they get from virtue signaling equals uh, feeling of self-righteousness minus actual effort, let's say. It's effort rather than virtue. So what these people do is they maximize this and minimize this. They maximize the amount of self-righteousness that they can get out of something while minimizing the uh, effort that they have to put into it. So you don't hear people virtue signaling about giving money to charity and going to homeless shelters and helping people. Why? Because that requires actual effort. That requires actual virtue. And you always hear people virtue signaling about socially acceptable beliefs, beliefs that are not out of the ordinary at all, right? Because that would require a little bit of bravery and a little bit of risk of social disapproval. So you never hear that, right? It's always exactly what the media is telling them to believe. That's what they're virtue signaling about because of this. They get the higher feeling of self-righteousness. They get more validation because of it because everybody already agrees with them. And it takes zero moral courage. Now, I wanna tell you about an example of this that I came across yesterday, uh, which kind of made me start thinking about all this. And that is somebody posted a job listing on a Facebook group saying, I need people who are gonna be divers, like a basic job listing for a job that was not a work from home job. And so some guy uh, went and commented on the post in all capital letters, stay effing home. And a whole bunch of people went and liked that comment. And it really bothered me for a moment because it was just so unprovoked and so incredibly nasty. Here he was leaving this nasty comment to a complete stranger who was trying to give somebody a job. And it made me realize that this whole coronavirus situation is the perfect storm of virtue signaling. Going back to our little equation here, right? You get huge feeling of self-righteousness because all the media outlets and all the propaganda outlets that are telling you panic, 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 uh, are giving you all sorts of feelings of self-righteousness for telling everybody else to panic too. And at the same time, look at the effort that's involved, zero. You stay home, you sit on your couch, you stop working, you do nothing. So here is this grand opportunity for people to assert how self-righteous and how superior they are because they're staying at home doing nothing. Naturally, the people who are already addicted to virtue signaling are jumping all over this and they're just getting deeper and deeper in that loop that we talked about. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful or insightful, I have a free guide that I just created. It's a free cheat sheet, sort of, uh, to the daily habits that will make your life a celebration, that will raise your spirit and get you in the habits that are going to create success and happiness in your life. So if you want to get that cheat sheet absolutely free, click the link below. And the point that I wanted to address just so that we have a little bit of understanding 
is that this behavior is basically completely unconscious. This is our rat brain acting without our higher order thinking. So if you think of the example that I gave with the guy that said stay effing home, even if he truly believes that people staying home and not working is going to make the world better off, you know, which is a very dubious belief as I highlight in this video, but even if he completely believes that with all his heart, saying something unprovoked nastiness like stay effing home to a stranger, what good is that going to do? Is that going to convince anybody? No, absolutely not. And this guy, I'm sure he's not a complete idiot. I'm sure if he thought about it for even half of a second, he would recognize that he's not doing any good for anyone. But he's not. This is completely unconscious, addictive behavior. He's not virtue signaling because he thinks that it's going to do good in the world. He's just pressing that ratgasm button over and over again without thinking about it at all. So when you see people that are engaged in this kind of behavior, recognize that this is not their thinking brain. And by trying to engage with their thinking brain, uh, unless you can raise their consciousness somehow, it's just not going to work. You're basically arguing with a rat that's been given a ratgasm button. It's just not going to go very far. Really, if there's any hope for these people, they have to be able to break their addiction and recognize that this behavior is ruining their own lives because it's bringing negativity, it's pushing people away, and it's wasting a whole bunch of their time. So unless you can convince the person of that, they're just not going to change. It reminds me of a very early example of virtue signaling in the Bible where Jesus was healing people, healing a lot of people, and the Pharisees came to Jesus and they said, you're not allowed to heal on the Sabbath. Right? Isn't that a perfect example of virtue signaling? Because look, they get a feeling of self-righteousness because they're going along with the social customs of the day, uh, all about honoring the Sabbath, and at the same time, zero effort. Here are people who have never healed somebody in their entire lives criticizing the guy who is healing. These people who are doing no good at all, but trying to make the, elevate themselves and make themselves feel better and get validation for themselves, criticizing the people who is actually actively going around and helping people. And so when Jesus was dying on the cross, his last words were, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I always thought that he was just being gracious when he said they know not what they do. They were, he was just kind of uh, making them seem like they were better than they are. But I, I realized when I, I was going through this experience, I realized that he meant that literally. They literally did not know what they were doing because they're stuck in their rat brains. Their human brains did not understand in any way the horrible evil that they were perpetrating upon an innocent man. So now if you apply that to modern times, virtue signaling has existed since probably the beginning of civilization, but in modern times, the mechanism of virtue signaling is the ratgasm button, right? We have it fully automated and it's easier than ever. So the virtue signaling that we deal with now is a much deeper ingrained habit. It's a addiction that's extremely hard to break. So what I wanna end with, which is something that I never would have said in the past, because honestly, I always hated these people, the, the virtue signalers. I thought they were the most disgusting, repulsive people on the earth. But with a little perspective, I want to encourage everybody to recognize that these people are in a very difficult situation. They are hopelessly addicted, and like Jesus said, they know not what they do. So forgive them, have a little compassion, and maybe even say a prayer for them so that they stop this behavior and stop ruining their lives. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a big favor. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe and the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I think you'll also really enjoy this video.